Welcome to the Mets Blog Roundtable brought to you by Ram. I'm Matthew Stroman from MetsBlog.com, and I'm again joined by Mark Craig from Newsday, Pete McCarthy from WOR, and Anthony DiComo from MLB.com. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> you, tell us the, it, you can tell we've done a few of these now because <laughs> that happens. It's starting to get comfortable. I'm going to bide my time and just there you wait go. here. and Next yeah. series, you can see his revenge. Excellent. <laughs> so I want to talk this time about David Wright, um, you know, face of the franchise, Kind of had a rough year last year, obviously, with the spinal stenosis. And, and I think the big question is, what does that mean for 2016? You know, you talk to him, I'm sure is all you have. And he says, oh, I can play 160 games. You know, I think deep down inside, he knows that's not going to happen. But how do you think it plays out? What do you, what do you see as far as, you know, how many games is he going to play? How's it going to work? I think that's everybody's question. Right? I don't think anybody really knows at this point. He's got to go to spring training. He's got to what do you expect show what he can happen? do. Let's put it that way. I, I mean, I, to be honest, I don't even know exactly what to expect. Do you throw out 120 because it sounds good? Could, what, if you think about the low versus the high, the high end would probably be, what, 130 games. I mean, the guy's going to need some rest over the course of the year. I mean, the low end, the low end can be anything. So <laughs> it's very difficult to predict exactly how uh, – this uh, this will work out for David. Yeah, and you hate to say it because of what he's meant to the franchise, but you don't know if this guy is going to go back on the DL at any point, go back on the disabled list, and just not be that same player again. I think the Mets are very hopeful. Obviously, David Wright is very hopeful that that won't be the case. But as Pete said, you're looking at a high-end range, and then the low end could be anything less than that. It could be from zero all the way up to whatever your high end is. Call it 120, 125, whatever. Um, it's not going to be significantly higher than that. Uh, I think for the Mets to compete this year, having David Wright, even at some percentage of what he was, not even in his prime, but in those post-prime years where he was a productive player, would be huge. It would be titanic. This guy is such an important player for the Mets, for the franchise, so it would be uh, just monumental for them. But for us to sit here and talk about it, I know that's what we do, sure. it, it's... It's impossible to know, and we're not going to know until we get into the middle of the season. We've got a little out. bit of a clue by the fact, you know, that they signed, you know, Zubel Cabrera, and they pick up Neil Walker, and they've got one more four. These guys that can play third base, they have a lot of guys that can play third base. And I think say, that's yeah, a clue. Their, their actions, the Mets' actions sure. this winter have informed us as to this dynamic, which is really you don't know. I mean, that's a great point. The low end, high end is just so yeah. wide. So, and, and their actions have shown that. Again, Flores is a guy that can play there. Um, you know, Ben Zobris they were looking at because he was someone that was going to be able to, uh, you know, spell him there too. So, um, yeah, the, the difficult part with this scenario is, like, there really is no telling. It's a wait and see. So that's this season. He's still <laughs> under contract for a lot of years. 2020. Now, it's kind of nice, you know, the, the, the salaries go down as he gets older, which was a nice uh, wrinkle, and that was well done. Um, but he's going to be here, hopefully. So how do you see this sort of playing out as they go? I mean, he, they're not going to trade him. Does he move to first base? Does they, you know, do they keep rolling with him? I mean, have you heard anything like that? And what do you think they should do? Well, that, that's what I'm really curious to see is how he fares defensively this season because he wasn't very good last year. At the end there was of last a point year. last year he jumped up to catch a ball in the world. I, I think everybody held their breath thinking he's coming down. He's going to snap in half. But even the numbers, and it was a very small sample size, and he was pretty fresh off the injury, so I wouldn't read too much into it, but it wasn't very good. Uh, as far as him going to first base, I really don't see that in the short term. I mean, you have a first baseman who is an everyday player, one of the few 150-game guys that you have on your roster right now. And by the way, is pretty good in Lucas Duda. Um, so that doesn't make a lot of sense short term. Maybe down the line you put him over there, but if he's not physically able to play third base at a high level, I'm not sure he'd be able to do it at first base either. Maybe you can hide it a little bit more. Um, frankly, to me, He's either a third baseman for the long term or you're in trouble either way. Well, just remember this. There's at least the whispers and the possibilities that we have a designated hitter in the National League as soon as 2017. So <laughs> That's what it's come to? There, there's a chance. Well, that's somewhere that he would uh, you that's be able to That's one hell of a long-term plan right there. Like, well, get the DH in here. I saw that coming into arguments for why to retain Let's suspect. not ask Pete any like, questions oh, wow. anymore as far as if you were GM, because I'm not sure you'd be a good one. Well, why wow. not? That's See, something there, you got to keep in mind. Is. There it was. Right, right there. Are you, are you the saying end. it's that unlikely that there's a DH next I'm year? saying you can't plan based upon some. Well, you could, you got to plan for everything. If that's a 50-50 <laughs> scenario, you got to think about it, no? For everything, I like I it. said, if David Wright is not capable of playing third base at uh -huh. an average level going forward, or even a below average level going forward, 
you're in trouble. That's it doesn't matter what you do with it. And getting back to that, like you mentioned the defense, I, what I'm curious about is, you know, when he came back, he talked so much about having to change his throwing mechanics because yeah. of the work that was done. So I wonder, like, you know, now that there's been a winter time for him to rest up and there's going to be a spring for him to kind of work on that some more. Because you remember last year, this was all going on as the team was playing. So I'm curious to see, moving forward, okay, has he, has he found a way that he's not physically compromised and, still, and can still make the throws, still move around over there. I think that becomes huge, and really the central question as to what moves, uh, what what happens moving forward. If he sticks at third, or does he eventually have to shift across the diamond? Right. I mean, that's the thing that struck me, having talked to them a few times this winter, is that he definitely has his head wrapped around this more in a way. I mean, I'm sure you all remember when he came to the ballpark at the end of last year for the first time. I mean, he it, it didn't look good, and he was definitely taken aback. I mean, but he clearly has a sense of where this is at, what it entails, and I think that's always going to work in his favor and the team's favor as well. So, But thanks, guys. I appreciate your time, and um, hopefully it's a good year for David Wright because Mets need it. <laughs> Remember, bookmark SNY.TV and MetsBlog.com for more roundtable videos and full coverage of Mets spring training in Port St. Lucie.